I've always been fascinated by these early plant hunters, not least because one of my forebears, George Don, was one of them. And he, like so many of these explorers, was Scottish. So my next stop is Edinburgh Botanic Garden. These guys were incredibly intrepid. If we take David Douglas as an example, this gentleman here, in his mid-twenties, sometime mm. around in the 1820s, was sent out to North America, and he walked across North America from sort of near Hudson's Bay, right across to British mm. Columbia. I think it's about 3,000 miles, something mm. like that. Collected a whole lot of plants, and then walked all the way back across again. 6,000 miles, well, that's in a straight line. Let's assume he probably did yeah. 10,000 miles yeah. of walking. I Incredible. mean, it's amazing. I suppose most people know him for the Douglas fir that was mm -hmm. named after him. But he also introduced lots of other plants, like mm. flowering currants, mm. skunk cabbage, right. things like that. The plants that, that many of us are growing in our gardens. Yeah, a few of us probably don't have something that right. David Douglas introduced yeah. in our gardens. It wasn't, I suppose, just tough terrain that they were having to deal with, was it? Well, no, no. In, in the case of poor Robert Fortune, this guy was sent up to China on a sort of industrial espionage trip yeah. to take to find particular plants. But he he was really walking into the Opium Wars. The British were, were essentially bombarding the Chinese ports into mm. submission. And so he was sent off behind enemy lines, if you like. He had a shopping list of plants. Mm. We want you to find a yellow camellia. Uh, we've heard that there's a peach that's three pounds. You're going to find that too. Um, chrysanthemums, I think they wanted, uh, and there was various other things. And so he was sent off to China to get these. It really must have been the, the, a terrible political turmoil at the time. A war zone. A war zone, essentially. Yeah. Um, and, and he had some sense that this was the case because he wrote to people who were sponsoring him and asked if they would supply some weapons for him. Um, and if you look at this letter here, basically what they do is they suggest that he take a stout stick. <laughs> I am <Would> much, you... <laughs> I'm much disappointed at the resolution of the committee uh, with regard, regard to firearms. I may have an opportunity sometime to get a little way into the country, and a stick will scarcely frighten an armed Chinaman. You couldn't make that up, could you? I'm off, dear. I'm going to fight the Chinese, and I've got my thick stick. stick. Well, you'll be pleased to hear that he got his arms. Did he make good use of them? Well, it turned out that on his way back from China with all his booty, he was on a boat sailing down the river, I think it was out into Shanghai, yeah. and was attacked by six lots of pirates. And he was the only armed man on the boat, so he waited till the pirates came almost alongside, and they were firing at him at the time, and he basically shot them. I don't know how many pirates he actually shot dead. 